Hi, it's Lee and welcome to the Tesla Economist. Tesla's stock price really has had a tough couple of years. I mean, literally, we were in the same stock price we were towards the end of 2020, not far off two years ago now. For those of you who bought around then and have been holding since, you're doing well. I'm sure you've likely been buying on the dips along the way too. And that's what we have had, opportunities, at least if you had the conviction. We've had Tesla stay at a discounted price for some time and offer some great bargains at other times too. We've had to be patient as we all feel that there is a big payoff on the way, which is when things get really exciting. What is this payoff gonna be, you might think? Well, I think when it does finally run, I'm hoping for the stock to hit about triple where we are today, something in the region of $1,000. The stock price feels like a spring and it's been so compressed that eventually when the pressure is taken off, it will just jump like it has on so many occasions in the past. But it's tough to put a price tag on the future, Tesla are envisioning, especially when it's, well, just so unbelievable. Self-driving cars, robo-taxis, cyber-trucks. It's like something out of a science fiction movie. Yet Tesla are turning science fiction into science fact. So yeah, I think I speak for most of us when I say Tesla going up 3x would feel pretty good. Sure, a lot of us think 10x or so too, but that may still be a while off. To triple the stock though, that may not be too far off. What with everything that Tesla has been doing lately. You know, things like building the largest manufacturing plant in the US to make more cars a year than any other car manufacturer has ever. Oh, and with the best margins ever too. Sounds too good to be true. Well, it's fairly tangible. What with that building being about one mile long? Yeah, that is one really big building containing state-of-the-art equipment and techniques that no one is catching up to. Well, probably not this decade. In a building custom designed for this process as efficient as possible, with as much as possible also being done on site. Yeah, I think Texas might be a part of this stock price tripling event, at least when ramped up. And what will ramped up even look like? How many Model Ys can Tesla make there eventually? A million? More? They won't have any problem selling them, especially with a $7,500 discount from the government. But perhaps by the end of the year, we may be up to half a million a year run rate except that Tesla don't just make the Model Y in Texas, do they? No, we have the most coveted vehicle in perhaps the history of motion to also come out of this factory, the almighty Cybertruck. With Elon Court saying volume production mid next year, although contradictory to what he has said in the past, we can't bank on that. But either way, we are anticipating to have reached that level by the end of the year, i.e. a run rate of around a quarter a million a year. But such a revolutionary new design, think how much Tesla have learned about manufacturing since the Model 3, which is the last car they really designed. The Y was just an extension of the same. Elon self-claiming that he knows more about manufacturing cars than anyone in the world. And they're now able to design a vehicle with first principles thinking around said manufacturing knowledge. This production line will be like origami, an exterior made of an exoskeleton, Castings made from the largest gear casting machine on the planet. No paint required. Very basic and simple, yet still such a great design achieved and full of application and utility that it won't scratch or dent. You think the F-150 is great on a construction site? Well, surely an invincible car would be more practical. You wouldn't want to risk scratching your brand new F-150 Lightning, would you? Oh, and of course, unlike all other EV trucks, this one will enter volume production. But if it's this simplistic in design, we do have to wonder, what sort of volume can they produce? Paint shops alone are a massive hinder in production. It's rumored Henry Ford only made the Model T in black because it dried faster. And with a million two Cybertrucks on back order, then they need to make a lot. I know a lot of people think that just because it was a 100,000 deposit, that a lot of these reservation holders won't actually end up ordering. But it also sounds like Tesla are going to honor the old FSD price for these orders which I think was around $7,000 at the time. Now, by the time this rolls out, FSD might be closer to $20,000. So although it's a $100 reservation, it's also a $13,000 discount on FSD. That might encourage people more to order. Also, it might actually have feature complete FSD by then. Yes, FSD, the software that may add an entire zero to the stock price once in full force. If the market sees real signs and starts to believe it's really on the way, and they finally get the message, there's no telling what price they may place on the stock. Of course, the same goes for Berlin. It also looks like Tesla feel comfortable selling the standard range Model Ys in Europe. And we're even seeing prices of rear wheel drive Model Ys at under 42,000 euros, 
in some countries. In other words, the European operations can keep cranking out tons of Model Ys, and they're all going to keep selling. Likewise, the same for China. The fact Tesla have managed to get an electric crossover SUV with reasonable range at this lower price point is just insane. Not to mention all the subsidies that so many nations also offer that reduce the price further. And of course, no cost in fuel, etc. And bear in mind, this is without front casting, structural pack, or in-house cell production. Yet still production costs are this low. A lot of people are going to be able to afford this car. And hopefully even CATL's new M3P cells will offer that little bit more range and minimal additional cost, finding a real sweet spot in the market and still being incredibly profitable. Not to mention when one day Tesla offer their own LMFP cells. But let's not get ahead of ourselves too much. But next year, it's very likely we do see an M3P Model Y, perhaps mid-range vehicle. In the meantime, whilst all third-party battery and cell manufacturers are ramping up to provide Tesla with more sales, well, Tesla is still working on perfecting their own 4680 sales, which should become the most produced cell in the world, perhaps within a few years, overtaking CATL, a high energy dense nickel cell that can be produced at a lower cost per kilowatt hour than a Chinese LFP cell. Oh, and perhaps at 10 times the speed and in one tenth the area. Now, as you know, I still think this is a very big deal and can't wait to see it in action. Nothing will give me more conviction than that. We really should be at a rate of at least 100 gigawatt hours a year with these sales sometime next year, just from Texas. But this is a tough time in the market and the economy. We're supposedly in something that resembles a recession, despite still having low unemployment rates and it being tough for the Fed to get a handle on. They're doing what they can to break the back of inflation. However, they don't have a huge arsenal to deal with. They're attempting a similar strategy to the early 80s, when the then chairman of the Fed, Paul Volcker, raised rates to around 20% to try and stop the inflation. It worked, except back then the government didn't have so much debt. The government also have to pay interest on their debt, and there is only so much government income they receive, and they have a lot of other bills. And this is obviously what is suppressing the stock price and the market the most. We may even have 12 to 18 more months of market suppression attempts, keeping economic confidence in a state of unknown. But if history is anything to go by, we should hopefully be into the recovery period towards the end of next year. But at the same time, this recession doesn't appear to be affecting Tesla's sales. Inflation may be bad for an economy in a lot of ways, but also it does make a lot of people wealthier. A lot of people who have real estate investments, well, suddenly their properties are worth more. Also, a real estate investor understands that the way to make money in property is to use other people's money, namely the banks and mortgages. Well, inflation makes property worth more and debt worth less. There are a lot of people prospering from these events, and a lot of them can afford Teslas. You know, and combine that with the overall organic demand for Teslas anyway, and basically Tesla sales nor profits should be affected by the recession, at least we hope. In the meantime, the math is fairly easy, and Tesla's production is a pretty much double next year in 2023 compared to 2022, possibly more, depending on how things go. Hmm. So what are we saying here? Is it me, or does it feel like all these events are kind of pushing towards the end of the year? Sure, we have discussed various potential catalysts this year, but they are perhaps reaching a little, or just enough to take us around where we were before all this mess started, but perhaps not enough to break all the way through the stratosphere. It might take all the events above until we get close to that $1,000 stop price. But wow, that sure feels like some serious momentum coming next year if you ask me. So I would guess that it might take until the end of 2023 to around early 2024 until we get the real stock price jump, which is why I bought leaps as far out as mid 2024, just to make sure I covered this entire period, of by which time I hope the recession is done and dusted too. And I don't know about you, but I think we should have some sort of party to celebrate. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.